This is Ali Managuza and I'm going to talk about system simulation of memory space, computation and memory platforms. First of all, why computation in memory? Conventional computer architectures, so-called von Neumann architecture, suffer from memory wall. For data to be processed on these platforms, it should be moved back and forth between processing unit and memory unit. To alleviate the problem, architects have introduced several levels of caches. However, even these platforms fall short in meeting the requirements of the new data-centric applications like neural networks. Therefore, we suggest computation in memory, which processes the data at the same site that it resides. Computation in memory can be realized by modifying the driving circuits of DRAM or by exploiting emerging devices like memristors. Our work targets the latter. Memristor is the fourth fundamental circuit element which has a nonlinear IV characteristic. This can be inferred from their name. They store information as the resistance of the device rather than storing it as charge. As a single device, it can be used for RF switches and physically unclonable functions. However, our focus is on the use cases where they are deployed in a crossbar structure. They may be used as a vector matrix multiplier, bulk Boolean bitwise operator, hyperdimensional computer, or as a main memory unit. For us to conduct our research, which includes investigating deployment implications, performing system level exploration, and developing a risk-like instruction set, we needed a platform, a model, or a simulator. Nevertheless, such a functional model that is widely accepted is not out there. Thus, we needed to build our own platform. To do so, we designed the computation in memory unit simulator. In addition, we developed a microinstruction architecture for memory crossbar space sims. Then, we integrated our brand new unit into a transport trigger architecture. Lastly, we used our framework to analyze the efficacy of the deployment of the memory crossbar based sims. And we observed an almost 4x speed up over the baseline PTA without any sims. Here, I briefly describe our new sim unit. It comprises two distinct domains, an analog domain, which we call it calculator, and a digital domain that is called microwind. Calculator comprises analog components like crossbar, analog to digital converter, and digital to analog converter. It duplicates the functional behavior of each module. The micro engine, on the other hand, consists of several registers and a controller. The micro engine orchestrates the operation inside the SIM unit and it also interfaces the analog calculator to the other units of the TTA architecture. Using the development instruction set SIM unit is programmed. The instruction set consists of three classes that follow each other until an operation of SIM is finished. To perform a vector matrix multiplication operation, for example, first the necessary parameters, like the coordinates of the window of the crossbar that will be selected, are written to the configuration register. Then the controller, which is essentially a finite state machine, manages the operation based on the parameters in the configuration register. You can find a detailed explanation on how an operation is done by passing a set of instructions in the paper. As mentioned before, we integrated our unit into a transport triggered architecture. This architecture is a class of exposed data pass architectures. In these architectures, basically the compiler can program the data movement between units. For example, there is no need for data to go to the register file and it can be directly transferred from a load store unit to an ALU unit. Here, you see a version of the PTA that's called LOTA. 
Luta is specifically designed to minimize the power consumption. We have used this design as a baseline for our comparison. We integrated our special unit using the TTA code design environment, which is an open source toolset for customizing TTA. The special sim unit model is a multi-cycle functional unit. It should be modeled in a manner that its latency is hidden for the, from other functional units. The sim unit has a three-stage unbalanced internal pipeline, where each stage of the pipeline corresponds to an instruction class that is discussed before. To hide latency, we introduced another set of data registers to benefit from double buffering uh, idea. To do so, the next vector to be processed is preloaded while sim unit is still computing the current vector. Here is a table from the paper that presents our experimental setup. You can have a thorough look at it later. Nonetheless, one thing that I want to point out is that we wanted to do an 8 bit uh, operation on memristors. While the maximum number of the bits that can be stored on a memristor is only 4 bits. So, how we can do it? Let's assume that we have an 8 bit column that we want to map it to a memristor correspond. We can split it into two columns. One column holding the four least significant bits, while the other holds the four most significant bits. The results of these two columns can later be added together with a simple shift and add circuit. To get an understanding on how memristor crossbars perform, we ran germ kernel on our simulator. We started with an 8x8 input matrix multiplied by an 8x32 weight matrix. In each step, we change one dimension of these matrices while the other two uh, dimensions remain fixed. First of all, we observed that by increasing the number of the input vectors, we can gain more, more and save a high number of cycles. However, as the size of input vector is too small, the benefit of employing double buffering is rather modest. Then, we increase the number of the rows of the weight matrix, which means we increase the size of input vector. We can see the number of saved cycles almost stayed unchanged. This is because, in this case, actually, the time that it takes to program the crossbar dominates the whole process. Lastly, we have this amazing graph with an incredible improvement. But how this happened? We assume that no matter how big the vector to be programmed to a row is, the number of the cycles remains constant. The programming time only depends on the number of the rows. Therefore, while for the baseline architecture, the number of calculations increases significantly, for the sim, only the time that it takes to load or store the data elongates. Due to the same reason, I mean the size of the vector, which, while, which is big, you can see we gain more and more by employing double buffering. For more analysis, I would refer you to the paper. The other kernel by which we assess SIM-based architecture is LENet, which is a deep neural network. Here I will briefly explain how we map the weights to the crossbar. For convolutional layers, we take kernels, we flatten them, and eventually we map them to one column. As you see here, we have 16 kernels, each of size 5 by 5 by 6. If those kernels are flattened, the layout that we would get would be a 150 by 16 matrix. Almost the same happens for input. We select every window, flatten it, and feed it to the same unit. In the end, after a vector matrix multiplication, we get 16 outputs, one output per channel. For the fully connected, it exactly looks like the germ kernel. For example, for the first fully connected layer, we map the 400 by 100 20 weight matrix directly to the crossbar.
But what if weight matrix is bigger than the crossbar inside? For example, what if we want to map the 400 by 120 weight matrix of the first fully connected layer of the Alinet to a 256 a square memristor crossbar? So it would not fit for sure. In that case, the solution is to use these formulas and multiplex task either in time or in space. Here is the evaluation of Alinet. What we have done is that we have changed the size and the number of the crossbars to see how it would affect the performance, energy, and area. From this figure, you can see that using SIM, at least a 2x speed up is gained compared to LOTA. By increasing the resources, obviously the performance improves. And the bigger the resources, the more suitable the platform would be for streaming input since it is not needed to overwrite the crossbar and change the weights. In addition, we have done some energy and area estimation. As you can see from the table, energy can be reduced by up to 69%. Obviously, nothing is for free and adding SIM unit takes up some space. However, if we put all these matrix together and calculate the energy delay area product, we can see that EDAP can be improved by 84% in the best case. That we have done is checking the accuracy of the output. If you have a look at this graph, you would see that many of the results deviate from the expected. You see how big this deviation is? There's another graph in the paper. However, even with such an uh, accuracy drop, the SIM classifies the image correctly. But for regression problem, some solutions should be devised. Based on analysis, we have found two sources of error, both sharing the same sort of reasons, which is applying a nonlinear function, here being the ADC, and then doing the summation. While in the correct case, the, summation, the ADC should be applied after doing all the summation. This happens either when we try to do an 8-bit calculation with 4-bit cells and divide one column over two columns, or it happens when we have a big column and we separate it and multiplex it in time or in space. As future work, we suggest to look for some accuracy improvement techniques, like retraining the neural network considering both physical characteristics of the crossbar as well as the neural network architecture. Another interesting subject could be to check how the crossbars can be utilized more efficiently and how data should be scheduled on them. Lastly, by adding more details to the simulator, the reliability and the techniques to improve it can be studied. In conclusion, we introduced a cycle accurate simulator along with the micro instruction set architecture. We integrated the simulator into a transport triggered architecture. By assessing the system, we observed a 3.9x speed up over LOTA. The energy consumption decreased by 69%. And most importantly, the energy delay or area product improved by 84%. Thank you for your time.